All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome to part two of the LibGDX 2D platformer tutorial mini series. And today we're going to be doing um, the tiled maps. So this is technically part two A. Um, so this is for if you want to do like a Metroidvania style game. Um, so you don't really want to be able to have the players be able to modify the map. Um, so yeah, this is for if you want to build a game where all the maps are stay the same and um, you can just play around with them. Uh, and the part B of this uh, will also be uh, will be about making a Terraria style game where players can actually modify the map and use tools and stuff like that. Um, so if you're interested in that, uh, that episode will be out tomorrow. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. If you didn't see the first part of this tutorial series, not much of this is going to make sense, so I recommend you go check that out. Okay, so what are we going to actually do today? Uh, we're going to create a new game maps type, and it's going to be a game map for the tiled maps. Uh, so today we're going to be loading up our .tmx map that we have here. Uh, let me just get it real quick. Um, it's on the GitHub. There's a link in the description. Uh, so here, I'm just going to get it up. Okay, they're copying it. So I'm just going to create a new file, uh, map.tmx. So you guys can use basically any map you want um, that was made in tiled. Uh, oops, I opened up tiled there real quick. Okay, there you go. So this is all the map data with the different layers. Uh, we can load it up in tiled real quick just so you guys can see what's going on. Okay, so we just have a basic map here. So right now we're using uh, these tiles that look like Terraria style, but you guys can do pretty much whatever you want. Um, just make sure that you modify the tile types in here to match uh, what you need. Okay, so now let's actually get into it. So what we need to do is we need to create a new class and we're going to call it a tiled game map. And it's going to have a super class of game map. So this is what we made in the last episode. Um, so what in the last episode we created this. It's full of a bunch of abstract, abstract methods. Uh, they don't really do anything at all. Uh, but now we're going to actually fill up these abstract methods by creating this tiled uh, game map. Um, so let's just do that because I I kind of like having that spacing there. It looks a lot nicer I find. Okay so let's uh, let's start by creating a constructor here. So we're going to need a couple of things here for uh, in the constructor. We're going to need a tiled map and a tiled map renderer. Uh, so let's uh, let's put these here. So tiled map, tiled map, and then we're gonna have a orthogonal tiled map render. So we're sticking with orthogonal tiled map right now. Uh, but if you guys want to use isometric or something like that in the future, it seems like um, tiled makes it very easy for you guys to do that. So. Uh, there's not a whole lot you guys have to change if you want to do that. You just basically make this uh, isometric. Okay, then we have to initialize these. So Okay, so new TMX map loader. Oops, we have to import this I think first. We have the new loader and then dot load and then we put the maps name so that'll be map.tmx one thing you might you might need to change here uh, in image you might need to change the source for the tiles um, so make sure it's tiles.png and nothing else uh, sometimes if you're using tiled it will link it as um, the uh, absolute directory from your root so it'll have like the C and then uh, users and your username and all that stuff you don't want that. Uh, so make sure it's just tiles.png because it's right there. It's right beside it in the same folder. Okay, and now we need to initialize the tiled map renderer. 
So this is what we'll be actually rendering the tiled map. So it does all this extra code for you in the background. This tutorial itself will be fairly simple because you know a lot of this code is done for you. Um, and the other tutorial series will be a little bit more complicated because we're going to be having to um, code a lot of the stuff that's already coded for you. Okay, and then in the render, it's very simple. All we need to do is set the uh, camera for the uh, we'll set view, and we can just pass the camera there. It does that for us. Um, so that's basically just telling the renderer what camera to use. Uh, we'll do a tutorial eventually on cameras, uh, but not not right now. <laughs> Okay, and then dot render. That's it. Uh, there's a couple other little things you need to do first. So we can dispose a tiled map. Um, and there's a few other things here. We're going to fill these in later, though. Uh, okay, so let's go in black back into here, the platformer game. I'll just fix those uh, import issues there. And in here, we can actually have a game map and we can initialize it to the tiled game map so we have um, oops, game map is equal to new tiled game map okay we can import this but we have to import this as well now here if we do game map dot render we need to give it a camera so we need to create a camera here first so it's orthographic camera. Um, just need to check real quick here. Okay, yeah, so we need to set it to ortho. Uh, here, I'm just going to move this down a little bit. A little OCD with this kind of stuff. <laughs> okay, uh, cam. So we need to initialize it. Orthographic camera. And cam dot set to ortho. Um, so what this is is we're just basically telling libgdx that uh, this is an orthographic camera, so it's going to uh, be able to control the game world uh, and control our viewport of it. Um, so there's a couple of things we can give it here. Uh, so y down, you want that to be false. That's if you want to draw from the top left. Uh, but we prefer, we prefer to draw from the bottom left, it just makes more sense. Uh, the viewport width and viewport height, um, so that we can just put gdx.graphics.getWidth and gdx.graphics.getHeight. Okay, and we also need to update the camera after we do this stuff. Uh, so let's just do update. And here we need to make sure we pass the camera, and that should be good, let's run it. Um, First we have to do this stuff here, so run as Java application, make sure you pick the desktop launcher, and there you go. There's our map. We can't really do anything. Um, so real quick, I'm just going to add uh, the movement so we can drag around the map. Uh, it's very easy to do, so we'll just do it real quick. So if gdx.graphic, uh, no, whoops, gdx.input. Uh, is touched then we can move the camera so camera dot translate gdx dot input dot get delta x and then here we're going to put the delta y so gdx dot input dot get so what delta x and delta y are is um, how much the mouse click was dragged since or how much it was moved since the last frame so uh, yep, it's going to um, move the map according to that. Well, the camera, sorry. And we also have to do cam.update or else it won't update its position. Oops. Now there's one issue. The X is inversed. That's just the way it works. So we need to simply just put this as a negative. And then it'll work. 
there you go so now we have the basic rendering done now we just need to fill in the rest of this stuff here and then this class will be ready to go we can start adding stuff in it um, and collision detections things like that I'm also going to add collision detections here today um, that won't be too long I don't think um, okay so let's get right into it the update nothing goes on right there in there so we'll leave it at that um, now there's these methods here so these ones are going to need access to um, different things included in tiled um, so uh, you know to get the width and the different tiles and things like that um, so let's let's do that real quick okay so if you want to get a tile by coordinate uh, we need to get the cell first so the way the tile maps work in um, in tiled is there's different cells and a cell can have a tile in it um, so we need to get the cell and then we need to check if it actually has a tile um, so basically this method our goal is to return the tile type so either one of these uh, based on the coordinate so uh, the coordinate of the cell so where in the map it is uh, not the pixel position but the the tile position okay and we need to do some funky stuff here so uh, we need to tiled map dot get layers so you need to get the layers and then we need to get a certain layer and that one will be layer since it's passed in the method here and we need to type cast that to a tiled map tile layer so there's different kinds of layers uh, but since we created this map with tiled we know that uh, all of our layers are tile tile layers but there are different layers supported by tiled including like image layers and things like that um, I'll let you guys uh, figure that out because I think you're able to Um, yeah, image layers are very useful for uh, Castlevania style games. Oh, uh, I misspelled this. This needs to be column and this is row. Okay, so now we need to check a couple of things. We need to check if the cell is not equal to null. Because if the cell is null, then that means that we're probably clicking outside of the map or the cell just doesn't exist within that layer or something like that. Um, so we need to make sure we check that uh, and if it is null we're going to return null otherwise we can get an error okay and now we need to get a tiled map tile tile is equal to cell dot get tile so this is going to return the tile um, at this cell on this layer um, so we don't even know if there is a tile on that layer it could be it's blank because the tile has uh, the possibility of having blank layers um, so we're going to check if the tile is not equal to null because if it is null then we can't get the ID uh, to get the tile type so int ID is equal to tile dot get ID so we're going to get the ID of the tile in that cell and then uh, with this we can simply just return the tile type dot get tile type by ID and then we pass the ID so we coded this in the last uh, tutorial basically this lets us get a uh, tile object based on the integer ID of it which is really cool so we can get data based on the map now so uh, that's super important for this and we just have a couple of other final little things here so uh, the width and height so that's very simple to do to get the width and height all I, all you need to do is this uh, we'll put it at zero so we'll get the first layer and then we'll get the width of the layer and we'll also get the height okay so this will just give us the width and height of the layer uh, width and height in length of tiles nine pixels and then this will is for getting the uh, number of layers so we can just copy this here 
and then dot get count. That'll give us how many layers there are. Okay, that's pretty much done. Um, so if we look here in the game map, we have this uh, method here. We talked about it. Basically, if we have a pixel location in the world, we can get the tile that's corresponding to it. Um, so what we're going to do here real quick is we're going to basically print out the tile information based on the tile we click on. Uh, so this would be super useful in the future. Um, so gdx.input.justTouched. Now these tutorials are going to go pretty quick, so if you need to pause, uh, don't worry about it. You can pause. Um, okay. Now this is uh, a little different here, but we need to uh, actually do something here. So we have uh, vector3 position is equal to cam dot unproject. New vector3. Now this is going to be kind of weird. I'll explain it real quick after. Oops. Okay. So basically, when you call this the GDX input that get X or get Y, you're getting the location on the screen on the window itself where you're clicking. Uh, but you don't necessarily want that. You want the location within the game world that you're clicking, right? Um, so what this does here, the camda unproject, it takes the position you're clicking on on the screen and converts it into game world coordinates. And this works whether you scale up the game world or whatever you do, it'll always work and it's super useful. Um, so now in pose, we have access to the game world position of where we click. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to get the tile type from our game map. So it's equal to game map dot get tile type by location. We're going to get it from the second layer, so layer one, because uh, the first one is layer zero. Uh, pose dot x and then pose dot y. All right, now if we look here, it's possible that we get a null tile type. And this happens when uh, there isn't a tile or there isn't a cell at that location that we clicked on. So we need to check here if the tile type is null. Uh, so if type is not equal to null. So if it's not null, then we're going to print out some information about the tile. So you clicked on tile with ID and then now we can do type dot get ID and then we can just print out a couple other little information just to prove it works uh, so get name uh, type dot is collidable and I think we'll just do a uh, damage Actually, I don't even think we have any other values than that. I think we pretty much did all of them. Get damage. All right, so let's test this out. Oh, looks like we have an error here. Aha, uh -huh, okay, I found the error. It's actually a mistake that we did last episode, so we never initialized this tile map hash map here. I'm actually surprised we didn't get the error before. Um, Yes, I learned something new about Java, so. Okay, there you go. So if you click here, clicked on the grass, it says you clicked on uh, tile with ID 1 grass. If you click here, it should be dirt, stone, and then lava. Here, it shouldn't be anything because we're checking on the second layer. Uh, if you look at our map, the... Um, the second layer is all blank where the sky is, and the first layer is nothing but sky. Here, I'll show it to you guys real quick. So if we disable the second layer, we can see the first one's all sky. And if we disable the back one, we can see there's nothing there. So 
Uh, that's just how our map works. Okay, so very cool. This all works now. Alright guys, so that's it for this video finally. I uh, mentioned that we're going to do the collisions, but I just realized that the collision also has to do with the other kind of, um, of uh, tile thing with the custom maps like Terraria kind of thing. Uh, so we're not going to do the collisions in this episode because people doing the Terraria tutorial uh, will also need that code and to see how that works. Um, so we're going to do that after probably in, uh, in episode 3. Uh, when we start adding entities and things like that. So we'll do the collisions then. So that's it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, please leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.